PJ Wellness Advocates. PJ is Wellness Day again. So be well informed and well equipped with healthy habits only here in Florida Wellness Lecture Series. This is Teacher Annabelle, your wellness coach of the day. So for today's lesson, join me in my class, right? And let us learn on how we can find solutions, all right, in our community. All right. So are you ready? Yeah. All right. So what are we waiting for? Let's start. Okay, so last time we were able to talk about, right, with other lecturers, right, the problems in our community. So what do we need to do? We should avoid, right? So we should reduce, reuse, and recycle. So we must work together to avoid or reduce our waste and reuse or recycle items. Just like what, you know, what we have here in the picture, right? So before we resort to disposing waste in our landfill, there are other options, right? So before you throw away that bike, someone might need it. Before you throw away that letter bag, you can give it to a friend who needs one, right? Okay, so before we go on further, let recall how do we treat waste, right? So the treatment of waste goes on like this. The physical treatment, compacting, the watering, right? Biological treatment, aerobic digesters. And the chemical tr treatment is disinfection. Thermal treatment is energy recovery. So a sanitary landfill is a carefully designed structure used to contain garbage. It is designed to prevent toxic substances in the garbage from contaminating the surrounding land and water bed. So how did they do that? They tried to dig on the ground, right? So that they put the waste in this big hole. So what is the importance of segregating waste? We all know that we've been, uh, you know, we've been uh, teaching this for quite some time since you were in elementary, right? So if we segregate waste at home and in school, it is much easier to gather all the ways that can be recycled. So ways that cannot be recycled may undergo treatment to produce energy prior to its final disposal in a sanitary landfill. So what are the different types of ways to begin with, right? So we have two, right? The biodegradable or in Tagalog, it's nabubulok, right? And the non-biodegradable, this is what we call in Tagalog as di nabubulok, all right? So as you can see here, what are examples based on the picture, like the, the food waste, you know, like here, um, fish, right? And uh, the chicken bones, right? The peelings of the banana and then we have our tomato. You know, these are examples of biodegradable. And the non-biodegradable cans, right? Wrappers, uh, bottles, plastic, bottle, right? Those are examples of non-biodegradable or in Tagalog as Dina Bubulo. Okay. So the biodegradable ways, there are two types of biodegradable ways, by the way. The kitchen ways or waste food, just like you know, what the example that we have earlier on, on and the garden ways, you know, we are talking about the leaves, you know, falling out of the trees and the twigs from the trees as well. Okay, so we could use biodegradable waste as animal feed or compost, right? Set aside kitchen waste that can be fed to animals like pigs, keep this in covered containers. Then, what you do not set aside for animals, you can turn into compost that can be used as a soil conditioners or fertilizers because we all know that fertilizers, you know, the one that um, manufactured, it can be harmful, right? It can be harmful to us and also um, to animals. So always separate biodegradables from non-biodegradables, right? Just like what we have in the picture. So can somebody tell me what is here in this picture, right? 
It is non or bio? Of course, we know the answer, right? This is the example of non-biodegradables, right? Right, and this one on the other side, right, this picture on the other side, food waste, again, it, these are examples of biodegradables, okay? Right? So I will separate biodegradables from non-biodegradables so that the reusable or recyclable waste can still be reduced or recycled. All right, let's move on. So it is the kitchen waste that causes garbage to smell foul, right? Really bad. It attracts insects and rodents, so always keep it covered. So there are three types of non-biodegradable waste, by the way. The recyclable, the residual, the special, right? So as you can see here in the example, recyclable, usually that you can recycle, right? Plastic, paper, can, residuals, right? You know, when you eat in the fast food, the, the one, the, the container, the cooking oil, right? Sleepers, um, diaper waste, right? The diaper that is used. And uh, these are the special electric, electric, um, you know, old electric fans that cannot be used, something like that. Batteries, masks, uh, Gillette, something like that. All right. So these are examples of recyclable materials. You can give to waste pickers, junk shops, or, or trash collectors, right? So because they could put them, them in a, into good use, right? The plastic bottle, the paper, right? Um, the can, plastic container, they can use that again. And these are examples of recyclable materials you can um, actually give away, just like what I've been mentioned earlier. But before you give them out, you should clean and dry these items before handing them to the trash collectors. Okay? And what about recyclable newspapers? What do we do with them? Dear students, right? Why we... Why should we keep the separates from our kitchen waste? Mm -hmm. Even broken glass should be handed over for recycling. Okay, but make sure these are placed in a sturdy container so that it cannot harm our garbage collectors so that the trash collectors do not get injured by the cut glass. Mm -hmm. And receivable also includes sachets and use beverage cartons, which people sometimes use throw away. Beverage cartons are made from different layers of materials that preserve the contents inside, right? Like the milk, for example, the carton of milk. There are some special facilities that recover these cartons so that they can be recycled into paper material or plastic sheets. The sheets can also be collected for alternative recycling or co-processing. So did you know there are students that the sheets can be used to produce energy, right? Or the cartons and sachets can be made into items like eco bricks and chairs, right? Okay, so we have here some examples of residual waste. So these are examples of residual waste. These either have low value, are too soiled and oily, or include paper that has some contact with food, right? Like cooking oil, right? Um, diaper that has a uh, poop on it, right? Okay, and uh, some can still be clean. Right, you can still actually clean them for alternative recycling where you know special facilities exist, but some are too soiled to be recycled. So, what about um special ways? These types of non-biodegradable special ways are hazardous, right? Healthcare, bulky, right? Old um chairs, tables, right? And hazardous ways just include Items such as chemicals and broken electronics that may co contain toxic materials, especially battery, right? They're not good for the health. And healthcare waste, of course, these include items used in healthcare facilities such as hospital or clinics, expired medicines, or anything that may contain infected matter, especially now, right? That we still have COVID 19. So, you know, we must therefore um, dispose them properly. Okay, uh, require special hauling arrangements due to their size, like an old bicycle, an old um, table, right? So, 
do you know, dear students, that we have like Republic Act 9003, also known as the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000. So this law requires us, right, citizens, to segregate waste. We all have a responsibility to ensure that waste is segregated properly. So as you can see, we have our different um, colors of trash bins, right? So each household is responsible for sorting and seg segregating their waste, make sure recyclables are retrieved, and using proper containers for each type of waste. So for example, the green one is for the biodegradable, the blue one is for recyclable, the black one is for special waste, and the third one is for the hazardous waste, all right? So Republic Act of 9003 also states each barangay is responsible for ensuring that biodegradable, compostable, and recyclable waste is segregated and properly collected. So each barangay must establish a materials recovery facility to retrieve recyclables and must also have facilities for composting materials. So as we can see here, we have a materials recovery facility collecting biodegradables or recyclable waste, okay? All right. So also in Republic Act of 19 or 9003, each city, just like here we have, we are living in Quezon City, each city or municipality is responsible for making sure that all residual and special waste is collected or transported, treated or disposed in ways that protect the public's health and the environment, right? Just like we, we have here, closed open dump sites, right? So it's um, segregated, the residual and special waste, and the household hazardous, okay? All right, so we should help save our environment, all right? Right, help save the planet, just like what we have here. So the more we segregate, the more we are able to recycle, and this helps our environment, right? So just look at our our dear Mother Earth smiling, right? Okay, so that is why I hope after you watch this uh, lecture, I do hope that you, dear students, will help me and my advocate to help save the planet. How? By segregating, all right? So thank you so much for tuning in. So this is me signing off, right? I'll see you once again in one of our lectures. Thank you.